Okay, see you. All right, Jason Ross, um, you're a local expert in fruit trees, right? Heritage fruit trees? Or more? Tell yeah. us about yourself. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I grow heritage fruit trees. I've got a small nursery, okay. a southern nursery. Where is so that? Where's that located? Yeah. It's on Mount Cargill, so just out of Dunedin. Yep. Um, but I basically grow fruit trees for the Dunedin area, the wider Dunedin area, including Southland. Okay. So focusing on um, yeah, plants that do really well for this area and plants that are um, pest and disease resistant as well, yep. so they're really easy to grow um, in people's backyards. So. You've actually produced a booklet over there, I think. Is there a green one there? Uh, yep, we've got a... I also produced this, this booklet which is um, specifically about um, trees and shrubs for the Dunedin area that okay. um, suit permaculture gardens. Sweet. So they're all multifunctional plants which is a um, yep. feature of permaculture gardens. We try and choose plants that are, um, have multiple functions mm. and they're all very uh, productive and easy care plants as well for people's backyards. Okay, and and today you were teaching the permaculture design course. Uh, is this your first day teaching the course? Or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Peter asked me to come in and talk about zone two, which is the okay. area that's usually where uh, fruit trees are planted, berry bushes are grown. Yep. And we quite often include uh, chickens or other small animals in that right. zone. That's what your notes up here on the board. Class. Yeah. So class today came up with. Um, a list of plants here, which or list of elements which generally occur in zone two. Okay. So we've got trees and um, bushes over here. Mm -hmm. We've got herbaceous plants. Uh, we've got animals that we might include in zone two, and then we've got other um, structures and things yeah. like that. So you did that in the morning with the with the group. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what after that? Um, we looked at a whole lot of slides today actually. Oh, on, um, yeah, some cool places that I've seen in the UK mm -hmm. and um, in New Zealand where um, good examples of Zone 2 gardens. Um, yeah, and, and focused actually on forest gardens, which okay. are a sort of a specific type of permaculture garden where um, uh, a natural woodland system is is imitated in the mm -hmm. garden and um, they can make really beautiful mm. um, productive spaces. Okay. Are those pictures digital or are they literally slides? Uh, no, we've got them on, on digital. Oh, okay. Uh, we might be able to get some copies or something uh, mm -hmm. to be able to see them. Yep. What, what after th I came late to the class, so I came in when everybody seemed to be drawing up a zone two for their plans, is that right? Or yeah, that's right. We got onto, onto people's own um, property plans and okay. um, thinking specifically about what type of plants okay. um, they need for their zone two and choosing fruit trees and making some specific choices about uh, fruit trees, for example, um, how many um, early apples you might need in mm -hmm. mid-season, late season, just to make sure that there's a full spread of, um, of fruit production mm. through the seasons. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, some good tips on there. One of the things that stood out for me was the idea that the ones that f uh, flower in the uh, February, January, February period, at least in the southern hemisphere here, uh, is when the sun's at its highest. So you might not need to plant them in full sun areas. They can be sort of semi-shaded until that month comes through when the sun starts to hit them. Yeah. So with they, the the fruits that uh, fruit at that time. Uh, yeah, fruit, yeah, yeah. They. Um, okay. Yeah. So and then after that, we went outside to the project plot for the for the group. Um, we what did we do out there? Um, um, we went over um, the site analysis work that you guys have done previously to mm -hmm. the day that I've okay. been here, and so you guys sort of got me up to speed on um, on what needs to be done for a, um, a site analysis, and we specifically looked at how that relates to um, the zone two area, so mm -hmm. the considerations that you might want to um, to think about with zone two and how zone two might relate to the zone one. So one of the things that was important in that site was trying to create some sort of sun trap or shelter so that the um, zone one and perhaps the seating area or meeting area uh, would be sheltered and yeah. sunny. What, what's your impression of the group? I mean, what, what are, what's some of the areas that's conceptually weak on as far as permaculture goes? What advice would you give to the group? I mean, one of the things that stood out is you hadn't done a soil in, uh, profile. Yeah. Um, what other things are, seem to be missing in the group at this stage in the course, do you think? 
Um, well, that was something that stood out. Was mm -hmm. We found that um, during the site analysis, the soil profile or just a soil, a good soil analysis hadn't been done. So mm -hmm. I think that's an essential part of a, mm -hmm. um, a site analysis. Um, next time I'm going to be talking a lot about um, how to create a really healthy mm -hmm. zone too. And so soil is the key. Yep. Um, oh, I think... I think generally the group there's a range of skills within the group mm. and um, yeah people were drawing out some okay um, some good stuff today yeah oh, well, hopefully we'll keep going on that process again be interesting to see all right then thanks very much okay. I'll put Cheers. this up on YouTube's okay okay yep all right.